Mars has its own version of the Northern Lights, and female birds show their true colours. This is Science Wrap. Hello and welcome back to Science Wrap, the show where we feed you the tastiest new research from the world of science, all wrapped up in an easy to digest package. My name's Miriam, PhD and science lover. Just last Friday, NASA announced that Mars has its very own version of an aurora borealis, or northern lights. Auroras are caused by magnetic fields funneling electrons and photons given off by the sun into the polar regions. These particles can then react with the gas molecules in the atmosphere to create the beautiful sights that are auroras. But Mars's auroras are actually really different to Earth's ones, and this all has to do with the two planets' different atmospheres and magnetic fields. Magnetic fields can either be closed, which means connected to the planet on both sides, or open, which means at least one end is not connected to the planet. These different types of magnetic fields then generate different types of auroras. So generally speaking, closed magnetic fields generate discrete auroras, and open magnetic fields generate diffuse auroras. The difference between the two types is how much space they take up. Here on Earth, we see auroras at the two poles of the planet. But because Mars doesn't have an inherent magnetic field, it doesn't funnel the electrons and photons in the same way that Earth does. Instead, what you get is a diffuse aurora over pretty much the entire planet. So auroras are not only beautiful, but they can tell scientists a lot about a planet's atmosphere and also the energy and flux of different types of particles that are hitting that atmosphere. All of these findings were made possible by the imaging ultraviolet spectrograph aboard the MAVEN spacecraft. To find out how Mars went from being a planet pretty much like Earth to one with a really thin atmosphere, check out the bonus content in the down bar. Here's a hint, it also has something to do with those particles hitting the atmosphere. Back down on Earth now, and ecologists have shown that showy plumage in birds is not just for the boys. In some bird species, the males are really brightly coloured, whereas the females are sort of brown or duller in colour. The usual explanation for this is sexual selection theory, which says that males can benefit from a bright plumage by allowing them to outcompete other males to attract females and produce more offspring. The only problem with this theory is that it doesn't explain when females are the ones that are brightly coloured. There are two really cool things about this research. The first one is that ecologists found a new way of measuring colourfulness. Basically, how do you compare a blue bird with a red bird? One's not more colourful than the other, that doesn't make sense. This new measure indicated how male-like or female-like the plumage of each sex in each species was. So then scientists could compare whether males were more colourful than females, both males and females were sort of drab coloured, or whether both males and females were brightly coloured. The second really cool thing is that they showed colour to be important for competition between individuals, not just males, as sexual selection theory would say. In areas where females had to compete for resources or mates, or help defend their territory, such as in tropical areas or in monogamous species, both males and females were brightly coloured, but when social or environmental pressures were relaxed, females lost their bright coloration. What this means in evolutionary terms is that sexual selection decreases coloration in females rather than increasing it in males, which is the total opposite to what was previously thought. Well, that's a wrap on some of the science news from this week. Thanks very much for watching, and feel free to subscribe to stay up to date.